Welcome everyone. This is Debbie Mayberry with National Kitchen and Bath Association. If you're just joining us, you're here for our third webinar of the month. It is called Technology in the Ideal Styling Space Experience with Rachel Perry, who's a communications leader of Roburn Incorporated, which is a Kohler company. And we also like to generously thank uh, Samsung for sponsoring all of our webinars this month. And Rachel, if you're available, uh, we're ready to get started. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. So hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining us today. So my name is Rachel, as Debbie mentioned, and I'm with Roburn. And today we'll, we, we will be covering technology and the ideal styling space experience. So as we all know, bathroom serves as a grooming station and a sanctuary. So in this course, uh, we're gonna go through what a well-designed bathroom and how that can be efficient, saving us time and effort. Here is our learning objectives for this course. We will review experiences and technological innovations that will help you to achieve the ideal styling space. And we'll go through all these bullets in later detail. So for our agenda, we're gonna go through, as I mentioned, the experience, lighting technologies, comfort and convenience technologies, styling space products, and then we're gonna wrap it all up. So let's go ahead and get started. So we definitely take a lot longer to get ready in the morning than our grandparents did. There was a body image survey that was conducted in 2014 that found adult females spend approximately 55 minutes per day getting ready and um, working on their appearance. And adult males will spend approximately 39 minutes. So you can imagine if you throw in a child or two or a teenager, you can imagine how the bathroom has become a rush hour environment. So with personal style and grooming standards changing, as I mentioned, it's gonna it's resulted in longer and more elaborate daily routines. And many of us have, have seen on like Facebook, all these how to tutorials on how to do makeup and hair. And so we're finding that people are uh, finding styling to be a source of relaxation and entertainment these days. So this is making the bathroom styling space an experience. Today's luxury consumers are preferring those experiences over brand names and are prioritizing their leisure time. So technology is increasing the quantity and the quality of time as a result. And we'll go through these four bullet points in the next slides. So we all know the European trends tend to lead uh, bathroom design. So in 2017-ish, and if you're not familiar with that, that's the International Trade Fair for Water and Energy Sectors. Ish uh, found that we saw there that the lighted, lighted mirrors were definitely the trend of the year. So in this course, we will review new technologies such as high performance lighting, powered cabinetry, multimedia systems and automation systems and how these technological advances apply to the styling space. So a survey was conducted for 24,000 people, households, and identified two key trends. One of them is increasing interest in having more experiences. There was an increasing interest in having more experiences over having more money and the willingness to invest time, money, and emotion in leisure activities. And the second trend was prioritizing self-actualizing and esteem needs over more basic needs such as social security and physiological needs. So with the trends moving towards experience and the fact that we spend most of our time indoors, a large focus has been on our built environments and the impact on our wellness and health. So one organization that exists it, and is a certification system is the Well Building Standard. And they are focused on improving human health and well-being in buildings and communities. So the spaces we live and work in every day have a significant impact on us. So well addresses these issues and it, all these issues are based on scientific research. So they work with designers and architects to create spaces that incorporate solutions that affect the human body. They have seven different concepts that fall under the certification system. We're gonna dive into some of these and explain a little further. 
So for the first one, clean air is promoted by reducing and minimizing the sources of indoor air quality. An example of this is the reduction of off-gassing, so which can take place in products with, you maybe have heard VOC, so the volatile organic compounds that come from things, such things as furniture. So for this well, well building standard, they need to be reduced by at least 95%, those VOCs. To support air quality, um, choose products, in order to support air quality, choose products made of materials with little or no off-gassing, such as aluminum and glass. Light is uh, the fourth concept that you saw. Lighting systems are to allow you to properly see, lighting systems should allow you to properly see your reflection, eliminate glare, and avoid eye strain and dark hot spots. Solutions that will meet this, um, such as controls or products that feature dimming and tuning, can provide that balanced lighting for your activities. Light systems are to minimize disruption to occupant circadian system, promote quality sleep and productivity. So we will discuss circadian and color quality uh, shortly, and I'll go more into detail on that. For Finally, for lighting, since non-diffuse lights can cause uneven spots of brightness and darkness in a space, electric lights are required to be shielded. So I wanted to explain this a little bit more. An example of this is if you are outside and the sun is shining with no clouds, the light is harsh. And if you're looking at one particular art object, the light is going to be harsh and there's going to be a lot of shadows around you or that particular object. But if the clouds are in the sky, they block out that harsh sunlight, making the light shielded or diffuse. So that is the difference, uh, just giving an example of non-shielded and shielded lighting. So the sixth concept is comfort. So a productive and comfortable indoor environment is promoted by limiting physical and mental distractions and supporting productivity and comfort. So products that are adjustable through technology, apps, storage solutions, and are modular in nature allow the customer to customize based on their needs. This gives the flexibility to the customer. The seventh concept is the physical environment is designed to support cognitive and emotional health. The impact on aesthetic design and materials create positive feelings and inspiring spaces. So really focused on color and how that plays into the space as well. So in addition, well, building standards empowers consumers by requiring disclosure of material ingredients used in the built environment. So this allows people to make an informed decision about the potential hazards to their health based on the materials in their product. So that is one of the features of well. Now, we're, now we will review recent advancements in technology, starting with lighting. Since people habitually check on their appearance, whoops, I moved one ahead, sorry. Sorry about that. On their appearance in the bathroom, they expect to have a complete view of themselves in good lighting. That is one of the expectations that people have today. So poor lighting, as you can see from the lady on the left, can be unflattering. This is typical of overhead lighting, which provides harsh shadows on the face. Lighting is ideal from the sides and provides even illumination with minimal shadows. So you can see there's a big difference between the two imagery. So when selecting a light fixture, there are two measurements to consider. The intensity, which is foot candles, and the light output, which is lumens. So I thought I'd give an example to help make this a little easier to understand the difference if you aren't familiar. So if you have a lighted mirror and a ruler, let's say, you're going to put the ruler up to the mirror and turn out the lights. One foot candle of the light is the amount of light the lighted mirror gener generates one foot away. So that, that measurement of light from the end of the ruler, uh, the mirror to the end of the ruler is the light that is generated. That's how you can understand how to measure that kind of foot candle. If a person stands in front of the mirror at the end of the ruler, a lumen 
measures the, uh, how much light gets to the person. So, um, so like I said, one is the, intens the intensity and the other is the light output. Now that you understand a little bit more about foot candles and lumens, you should select a light feature that emits sufficient lumens to produce the desired amount of foot candles on the target surface. So with mirrors, the, the user typically stands 18 inches from the mirror center. So lighting color is another factor um, that is important for good lighting. So correlated color temperature, which you see here is CCD, will tell you what hue and tone of white to expect from a fi uh, fixture. So CCT is measured in Kelvin. So different temperatures of on a Kelvin scale represent different colors. So to break this down a little bit, 2700, as you see here, is a war considered a warm white. That is going to give you a more orange yellow color and is often um, used to color match to other lighting in a residential space. 4000 is going to be more of a paper white, and it is also known as a neutral white. And then 5000 or above is more of a bluish white and is known as cool white. So in this photo, you can see on the left, it's going to get, it gives her a warmer um, a lighting, and on the right, it gives her more of that paper white lighting. So warm white lights enhance reds and oranges for a more relaxing and intimate atmosphere. Cool whites are going to enhance blues and greens, creating a more invigorating public atmosphere. The right choice depends entirely on the user. So to give an example, uh, I prefer using 4000 Kelvin, which is that cool white, or sorry, the neutral white to get ready in the morning because I like having the confidence that when I'm getting ready and doing my makeup for the day, that I'm going to look the same inside as I am when I walk outside. My boyfriend, however, finds it too harsh. So he prefers the 2700, which is the warm white. And that allows him to, you know, not have it be so harsh for his eyes and it's just his preference. So it's all dependent on preference and that's where co that color comes in. Another thing is the color rendering index is another import, uh, important measurement of light in relation to how it affects the appearance of color. So the higher the number to 100, the more the person will be clear and bright and the closer they will be um, to appearing appearing in, in the mirror as they do to an outdoor natural setting. So it'll be closely matched. So using fixtures with a low CRI can result in a flat dull appearance. As you can see from the image, the 50 compared to the 90 CRI. It just changes how the color looks and makes, and if you're higher, it's clearer and brighter. Title 24, if you guys aren't familiar with that, is California, um, California's initiative to reduce energy use. They have, um, they have a requirement, a certified indoor lighting requirement that requires luminaires to be high efficacy with a 90 of equal to or greater than CRI 90. So it, this is an automatic thing that they require in California. Another example getting into color accuracy is that this is a little confusing. So the CRI averages um, color rendering for eight colors. So if you see R1 in this graphic, R1 to R8, those are the colors that are used to identify CRI. Some manufacturers measure R9 um, and that's because it's saturated red and it demonstrates the effective renders of skin tones and wood finishes. So an R9 value of 50 plus in conjunction with the CRI of 90 plus is needed to accurately render colors, bring out skin tones, and accurately match makeup to skin tone. So circadian rhythm is another important factor. So your circadian rhythm is a 24 hour internal clock that is running in the background of your brain and cycles between sleepiness and alertness. So outside forces such as light can have a huge impact on your circadian rhythm. When it is dark at night and you're 
your eyes will send you a signal to your brain to feel tired. Your brain in return will then have your body release melatonin. So when using a cell phone or a laptop before bed, this can actually disrupt our circadian rhythm, making us more alert because that light is simulating light of a midday sunlight. There are certain technology that is out there that can uh, limit or filter some of that, uh, the blue light. So there are solutions, the blue light blocker apps that are coming out to help reduce that. Mirror lighting in the bathroom provides an opportunity to adjust light output and color temperature at influential times of the day. So for example, in the morning, a cooler white will prepare you for the day while a warm white will help you unwind for the evening. So that's how light can impact you and your circadian rhythm. Energy efficiency can be addressed by light fixtures and lighting controls. So LED lights last up to 50,000 hours compared to 3,000 for fluorescent, 8,000 for halogen, and 1,000 for incandescent. Since the LEDs are so compact, they actually make a great solution for styling spaces by integrating into mirrors, cabinets, and vanities. In residential, a simple, a simple manual switch is sufficient for on-off control for controlling lighting. Um, dimming switches are also important because they allow a user to adjust the lighting intensity to user preference. So you can actually adjust the brightness from all the way bright down to lower levels based on the user comfort. And in commercial and with Title 24 energy code, Vacancy sensing is used to reduce energy consumption by only turning on products based on occupancy. So if it recognizes you walk into the room, the lights come on, it's an energy efficient solution. Another option for products is a capacitive uh, touch switch on a product. This allows the user to dim the lights on the product itself, taking the need to have an outside control off the wall. So we had talked about CCT uh, and so the controls are allowed to, can be used to help uh, identify scenes in a room. So this example that you see is uh, giving you four different scene options. So you can do task lighting, which is 5600 Kelvin at 100% light. And that 100% light is actually your dimming. Or you can set it to ambiance. So if you want a warmer, kind of more relaxing, you know, tone, you can do ambiance, which is 2700 Kelvin. That's that warm white. And then do 100% light. Or if you want a night light, then it's that warm and then you dim it down to 10%. So what's really nice about these scenes is that you can have your customers pre-set up scenes or they can use things like apps to set those scenes or modify those scenes at any point. And that just makes it really nice so a user can set it based on their preference. And the home automation apps, like I said, um, those are the ones that allow you to adjust the lighting and the scenes via app. So now we're gonna get into comfort and convenience technologies. So we are actually spending more time in the bathroom like was previously stated, which makes efficiency and convenience a must. So defogging is one of those ways that saves us time by not having to wipe the mirror ourselves. So we all hate the little fuzzies that can end up from wiping down a mirror with a towel. So defogging technology allows you to either flip it with a switch and have it turn on while you're in the shower and go off automatically, or flip it with a switch and you flip it off to turn it off. Or there's also technologies where it's auto defog, where it senses the the moisture in the air and will turn off and turn on and then turn off when the moisture is um, gone. So that's defogging. We're also seeing things like USB charging ports. We all take our phones everywhere with us, so we're always looking for ways to recharge. So providing USB charging port ports will provide a level of convenience to customers. 
And then also interior outlet. So you can see from that second that second row first image, interior outlets save time by removing clutter from the countertop and allow things to stay plugged in. So you can imagine no cords being all over the countertop. Things can be safely stored away. That's another convenience. Bluetooth, Bluetooth speakers and video screens allow users to move seamlessly in the bathroom without disconnecting from entertainment. So this allows you to listen to your music from your phone by connecting through Bluetooth and continue about getting ready for your morning. Or if you want to watch how to videos, weather or news via TV in your cabinet or mirror, this allows you that ability while you're getting ready for the the, for the day, or you can listen to audiobooks or even a bedtime story while your kids are in the tub as you wind down for the night. Refrigeration is another trend that we're seeing in the bathroom. So with the needs to keep medicines and preservative free beauty products chilled, refrigeration provides a level of convenience by keeping these items where you need them, which is in the bathroom. So this is another trend that we are seeing. So we've touched upon smartphone app control. The important takeaway is that residential automation allows family members to customize their own experiences in the bathroom. So we talked about that through scene, scene controls. Uh, there is, you know, voice controls, time clock events, you know, being able to dim it to based on your preference, occupancy sensors. These all allow a family to control their experience. Similarly, commercial automation systems, they are working to empower the traveler to customize the hotel bathroom experience. So this gives uh, the customer the ability to adjust the room lighting, the dimming, the music, all of that based on their needs through apps or other features in the hotel. So styling space products. So in the previous slides, we explored strategies to help create the ideal styling space experience. So in this section, we're going to go through lighted mirrors, powered medicine cabinets, magnification mirrors, powered vanities, hidden storage solutions, modular lighting, and then the styling space design software. So we've talked about the benefits of LED lights. So being long lasting, 50, you know, 50,000 hours and compact. So with space constraints in hotels and urban bathrooms, using a, using a lighted mirror instead of a wall sconce can wall sconces can help. So the American Lighting Association recommends recommends mounting sconces and luminaires at least 28 inches apart and 60 inches off the floor. So you can see from this illustration what there what it's being identified as dead space. So you actually have to use a lot more um, spacing, which is losing the ability to add mirrors. So lighted mirrors kind of allow you to fill that whole space. Lighted mirrors are also various and are available in various shapes and patterns. So as you see here, we have a round and a square lighted mirror with two different light patterns. So light patterns are becoming very popular. This, uh, the one on the left is an inset. The one on the right is perimeter. There's many different versions out there. So, and this is how, this takes place by etching the back of the mirror. That's how you're getting this light pattern. So the patterns are etched on the back of the mirror, making it easier to clean on the front because the etching is on the back. And it also prov uh, provides as a diffuser or works as a diffuser, which we talked about the benefits of that earlier with a sunny day versus a cloudy day. So the diffuser just allows, because it's etched, it kind of filters out that light. So it's not harsh and that direct light isn't just coming right at your face. So it kind of diffuses the light, making it softer and, and easier on the eyes. So while we stated LED is 50,000 hours of service life, um, one thing to note is that driver failure can occur before the LEDs. So your driver is, um, you should confirm that the product that you choose uses a high quality driver and that the driver is serviceable. So that's a really important thing when selecting a lighted mirror for a project.
And lighted mirrors can incorporate features such as these. You, like we mentioned, USB charging, Bluetooth speakers, video screens, defogging, touch point dimmer controls, adjustable CCT, night lighting, which we haven't gone over and we will in a bit, integration with home building automation, and then smartphone. And going back to the screens are typically placed in the bottom corner to avoid blocking the view of the mirror as an example shown in that image. So there's a translucent silver film that creates a seamless mirrored surface when the screen is not in use. So it still will act as a mirror when your screen is off. So as we discussed earlier, an R9 value of 50 plus in conjunction with a CRI of 90 plus is needed to accurately render colors and bring out those skin tones and accurately match makeup to skin tone. Another feature is Bluetooth speakers. So these allow the user to easily connect to their personal devices as we already discussed, but the benefit is to is the uniform sound versus directive sound. So undirectional speakers located in the cabinet provide, in cabinet sides, provide a lesser directive sound quality. So for the best audio experience, you should specify a wireless multi-directional speaker that employs the entire mirror surface to, uh, for resonance and uniform sound. So this just shows an example of uniform versus direct. So uniform, uniform will take over the whole space and give you better sound quality. So powered medicine cabinets can provide convenience and options and can be surface mounted, recessed or semi-recessed. In many of these cabinets, you can get those features we've already discussed, uh, speakers, video screen, uh, lighted options, USB interior and night lighting. Higher end cabinets can offer a variety of accessories and the interior fittings for a truly customized solution. So you can do things like magnetic tool holders. So you can see in that image, it can hold like nail clippers and, and tweezers, really trying to keep everything in a nice space. So it makes it convenient, easy to use and provides that level of comfort. The adjustable storage accessories allows you again to store things out of the way. If you need a razor and you want it out of the way, um, electric toothbrush can fit into a medicine cabinet, just makes it really easy to organize. And then safety lockbox. So we talked about being able to store certain medications and in, in refrigeration, safety lockbox allows you to be able to store uh, medicines and safely put them away so uh, that you don't have to worry about someone um, taking your, your you know, um, scripted medications from the cabinet. You can have that confidence that it's got a lock and it is safe. So wireless magnification mirrors are another solution. So rechargeable magnification mirrors combine LED lighting with convenient portability. So these accessories can be attached at any height in to a medicine cabinet door. They can be placed on a countertop, they can be held, or even packed in a travel bag for styling when and where the user goes. So these uh, magnification mirrors can range from five to 10 time magnification and are really convenient for getting ready for your day. So other features that we've seen is this handy tool charges via USB cord or an inductive charging dock. So there's two different ways that they can be charged. So vanities are available with technology options as well, such as integrated power outlets for styling tools and LED night lighting. So some manufacturers offer integrated refrigerators for medication cosmetic and refreshments in their vanities as well. That's just another solution. So night lights not only provide, you know, the color matching or a beautiful soft glow, they also provide that wayfinding light so that you can see your way around the bathroom or a space without having to turn on your lights and wake yourself up fully. They also provide nice interior illumination into your drawer. So if at night you're getting in, you're trying to shuffle around a space to find something, it gives you enough light that you can find things in your, your drawer. 
And then the other benefit, like I mentioned, is color matching. So if you want to make sure all your lights in your bathroom look the same. So if you want a warm white and you want everything to match, there is those abilities, ability to add that. Hidden storage solutions. So to maximize storage space, uh, there are things such as tip out drawers. So they give you storage back instead of having a fake drawer. I'm sure many of us have experienced that where we've been at a bathroom vanity and there's a drawer right next to the sink and we've tried to open it. I know I've done that several times. So instead of having like losing that drawer and always feeling frustrated because it's there, you can also do a tip out drawer, which gives you enough storage to store like little brushes and things like that. So it gives you that storage back without um, having a fake drawer. In addition, there are side drawers that can tip out and store items for otherwise wasted space. So an example that you see in these photography in this photography is you can store things like Kleenexes. You can store things such as hand towels. You can do your garbage can there. You can do um, articulating shelves to store little items. So there's a lot of ways out there to where you can have these hidden storage solutions. Modular lighting allows you to create seamless modular configurations, as you can see from this photo. These LED lights are designed to fit flush to a medicine cabinet or a mirror. So the nice thing about modular lighting is that you can make it as large as your customer is looking for. So you can just keep on going. If someone wants a wall of mirrors and lights, you can do that. And it gives them appropriate task lighting to go about their day. So it, it's, it's definitely a modular solution and you can even intermix with lighting Oh, sorry, intermix with medicine cabinets and mirrors. If someone isn't needing that much storage, they could do, um, let's say in this configuration on the outside, two cabinets on the inside, the middle be a mirror. So they're not purchasing things that are wasted. There is software out there that exists that help you uh, design a styling space. So these design apps allow you to design a styling space in 3D environment, allowing you to help your customer visualize. So sometimes, especially with modular products, it can be difficult to understand how everything fits together, all the parts and pieces, the color configurations, how everything is going to look. So these type of design apps are extremely useful to be able to visualize. In addition, these tools can provide specification and ordering support. So being able to get a full bill of materials, get all the parts and pieces, do installation instructions, spec sheets, um, and contact information for next steps is really uh, what's useful about these design tools. So technology integrated, uh, so there's many applications that you can use this. So technology integrated styling space products are suitable for condominiums, residential, hotels, spas, bars, and retail. So here's an example of a case study. So this is an upscale condominium that was a uh, building that was being built and integrating in, uh, lighted mirrors and powered medicine cabinets as a luxury feature. So you can see there's a you know wide range of bathroom sizes, configurations, prevents uh, prevented easy standardization of volume discounts. There's a greater risk of coordination issues with electricians. So this was one of those case studies that we have. So I did move a little fast in this presentation, but I'm hoping we can fill up some time by uh, questions and answers. So to summarize, luxury consumers prioritize experiences. So as we know, um, consumers desire more leisure time and are willing to spend more on it. So considering the increasing amount of time people spend on personal care and grooming, the bathroom styling space is becoming an important focus as we went through. So 
The ideal styling space experience is both efficient and indulgent. So this experience can also promote health and wellness by addressing concepts identified in the well building standard, which we went through um, several of those, con those seven concepts. So innovative styling space products such as lighted mirrors, powered medicine cabinets and vanities use technologies such as LED lighted mirrors, uh, LED lighting, smartphone apps, and building automation systems. These all can be used to address these needs of the consumer. And with that, these are our resources available uh, that we use throughout this, present, this, uh, this webinar. And then any questions? Well, thank you, Rachel. This has really been interesting. You've covered a lot of ground and we are opening up to questions and I see a couple coming in. I also just want to quickly mention our thanks to our sponsor this month, Samsung, and thanks to Rachel for her time. So here's a question. What kind of electrical considerations do we need to keep in mind for built in vanities and mirrors? So electrical considerations, so it's you do need to, for vanities, have something hardwired or uh, electrical outlets. So if you are doing vanities with night lights, for example, um, sometimes night lights are on a plug. And so you would then need uh, outlets uh, for each plug. So if you look at this, this, for example, this has three different drawers, so you would need three different plugs. Um, other times you can hardwire, so you can hardwire directly into the wall to accommodate those night lights. For mirrors, um, there's both options. You can hardwire directly into the wall, or we've seen new solutions coming out where things were called what we call pigtailed, which means that they're pre-installed with a plug. And the benefit of that is it's actually cost saving for not having to bring an electrician out a second time. So you would just have an electrician come in, install the wall outlet behind where the mirror is going to be placed. And then when the mirror arrives, you just hang it and then plug it in. And the benefit to your customer as well is that, you know, if they're deciding to make this investment, they can actually unplug it and take that mirror with them if they move. So, and then put up something, you know, cheaper. So there's a lot of benefits that are happening with um, installation and the electrical in these products. I hope that answered your question. Okay, uh, there's, sorry about that, my sound is going in. Can you hear me okay, Rachel? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay here's another question. Other possible hidden storage solutions that this person has used, toe kick storage, especially for a step stool, and reverse face of cabinet to put doors above a working drawer. So that's basically a comment. Mm -hmm. Um, we've, we've even been seeing storage where, you know, people are incorporating uh, dog food dishes below the bottom of the vanity. I mean, yeah, hidden storage is becoming an important influence that we're seeing in, this, in these spaces. Okay, another question. Um, someone wants you to leave the resources screen up for a bit longer. If sure. You mind. Thank you. There we go. Okay, and then... Someone's asking how do overhead or wall sconce light placement, how does that interact with lighted mirror? So usually with, a, you know, everything depends on the size of your room. Let's say you're working in a compact space. Chances are you do not need any type of lighting besides we would probably recommend having ceiling lighting because not everybody's going to always want to use their lighted mirror they might want additional lighting so ceiling lighter lighting and then that lit mirror should be plenty of light to accommodate your task lighting you're getting ready for the day so you wouldn't need to have additional sconces or any other types of vertical or top mount lighting if you don't do a lighted mirror obviously you need other source but lighted mirrors are coming so far that in the quality that it's enough light if you're doing a bigger space you may need light in different spots of the room but that that lighted mirror will be sufficient enough for task lighting okay great thanks and then someone's asking, what is the styling space design software that you mentioned earlier? Uh, Debbie, am I allowed to? Yes. 
Okay, so, okay, just making sure. So Roburn has a Roburn designer tool and other companies also come out with their own design tools. So, you know, one of the things with Roburn is we're a very modular company. And so people have a hard time imagining how to put all the parts and pieces together and all the little things that are needed, such as side kits, gain kits. So we developed this tool and many other uh, manufacturers are doing this tool that you can get in and design and be able to see how everything looks you can spin around the room turn it at different angles change the colors add night lights make it as modular as you want and you can do that all in real time with your customer there if you wanted to work with them to build that so and then the nice thing is it gives you that bill of materials with all the parts and pieces spec sheets installation all in one and it can also put you in touch if you're if you don't already have a showroom with finding a showroom in your area and so it's just these kind of tools exist out there today and are really meant to help you to be able to visualize. That's great. That's great. Great information. Thank you. Yep. Um, someone's asking how many light sources uh, do you design into a bathroom space? How many light sources? Uh, so like we were talking about, I would say it depends on how big your bathroom space is. I'm not uh, an electrician, so I don't know all of the the requirements, but like I said, I think that if you have a lighted mirror, for example, which we're seeing them growing in trends, lighted mirrors and lighted cabinets, that will be your, your main source for someone getting ready for the day or winding down at night. That will handle all their task needs. That's what we call task lighting. Uh, but you're also still going to need other types of lighting for getting in the shower, for, you know, if you just want to you know, go in and out of the bathroom. Also lighted mirrors are also gonna give you that night light feature. So it kind of reduces anything else. If you have a dimmable product, it's gonna reduce you having to have any kind of lighting for that as well. So I hope that answered your question. Okay, that's very helpful. Um, someone's asking about are there products that can be used in the shower or wet area to light a niche? So for Roburn's perspective, um, we do not, but there are other companies out there for the shower itself that do have a medicine cabinet or a mirror that can go into a shower. And so you can imagine if you have, if you're, you know, doing your hair or doing like, um, you know, for women, if they're trying to clear off their eye makeup or something, it gives you that lighting so you can see how it, you know, how everything's looking and it, it or if you need a mirror for shaving. So they're usually smaller and they are going to be certified for damp, those damp spaces. So yes, there is lighted mirror solutions for the showers today and that will help. I think it's more meant to illuminate you versus lighting up the shower, but that gives you, um, alternative options. Okay, thank you. Um, there's someone here that says, we have problems with receptacles inside cabinets being rejected by local electrical inspectors. Have you had any experience with this? And if you have, do you have any suggestions? Hmm. Um, we have, I don't recall any issues with that. Uh, you know, a lot of our, I wonder if it's we have been upgrading, like for sample, some of our cabinets to be tamper resistant. All of our stuff should, you know, every cabinet that you have or mirror should be UL or ETL certified because that certifies it not only for damp spaces, it also certifies it to make sure that it's not going to fall off the wall. So um, UL, ETL, there's two, there are two different organizations. Both of them test for the same thing. They make sure that the product's going to be safe in a home once it gets there, if properly installed based on the installation instructions. So, um, Yes, yeah, so everything should be UL ETL certified. Um, also, if you have plugs or anything inside your your cabinets, um, everything should be, uh, you know, tamper resistant, things like that. Um, I don't know if that answers your question or if, uh, if you're looking for something else, um, let me know and I will answer it in a different way. <laughs> okay, thanks, Rachel. Um, so someone's asking who's who's the manufacturer or who is manufacturing lighted mirrors and where can they be found? So Roburn is a man. There are several manufacturers out there. Um, 
So Roburn is one of those manufacturers of lighted mirrors. We have many different tiers of solutions from a, a lower price point, like our price point starts at, I believe, uh, 400 and I'm just throwing a number out there because I'm not 100% sure of the exact list price, but 479 list. Um, so from a showroom, you're going to get a discount from that. So that's our starting price point. We go all the way up to having products with audio in it. So again, what we talked about that technology of if somebody wants that level of convenience and while they're getting ready for the day, be able to listen to music in their bathroom, which is pretty amazing, then um, we have products that also meet that need as well. So there are other companies um, that will also um, offer lighted mirrors. If you're looking for a list of those, let me know and I can ramble those off. Okay, good to know. And just so everyone in the audience knows, I will provide um, Rachel's contact information in the survey that's sent out tomorrow. So she's still willing to accept questions after today. Thanks for doing that, Rachel. Absolutely. Okay, we have two more here that I see. Um, how is the light quality affected when the LED lighting uh, is an electric mirror, yeah, sorry, how is the qu light quality affected when the LED lighting in the electric mirror is dimmed? Light quality is still the same, so it's not going to affect because you're not changing. So again, it goes into you're changing the intensity, you're not changing the quality. So the quality will still be the same, you're just turning it down. So it just gives you a lot more control over, you know, uh, heart. if you don't want that really bright light at night, for example, like I was saying, if you're winding down for the day, turning down the intensity by dimming it will just give you that night light effect and allow you to kind of relax for the night as you're getting ready for bed. Okay. Uh, then someone was asking, you mentioned earlier the American Lighting Association and the spacing of the lights. Is there a reference manual or standard for those light placements? I am sure there is through the American Lighting Association. I don't have them right now, but I could definitely look those up. But I do know that the requirements that I had communicated was one of the things that they said, and bear with me, I'm getting back to that that slide. So it was, they require, yep. it's that dead space. I think it was like 60 inches off of the ground. Bear with me. And then it was, 60 inches off the floor and at least 28 inches apart. So that is, they recommend, it sounds like, American Lighting Association recommends mounting sconces and luminaires at least 28 inches apart and 60 inches off the floor. So I can absolutely, uh, if you want to contact me, look, uh, look for that and send that to you for reference. Okay, great. And so then someone else actually is asking for a list of lighted mirror companies. So that might be something that that I don't know who that person. I don't have that person's name here in front of me. Uh, her name is Mary. So okay. Um, so hopefully we can get that information to her, or maybe you can send it to me, and I can send it out tomorrow along with the evaluation survey. Sure, I can do that. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm not seeing any further questions, so if you do have further questions, please put them into the chat now um, while we still have uh, Rachel with us for another couple of minutes. And, and if there aren't any more, yep. then... So I do have, so I could just tell you briefly for the top manufacturers of lighted mirrors based on what Roburn um, tracks is, you know, Roburn is obviously one of them. Kohler, our parent company, is another um, manufacturer of lighted mirrors and then electric mirror. So I would say we are the top three and then there's a lot of smaller brands after that. Okay, thank you. And then someone's asking, do you think that uh, the bath bar lights are outdated at this point in time? Is that, is that, are you referring to top mounted lights? I don't know if, if, if yes, I would say yes. I think people are understanding the value of lighting and especially when you start seeing examples of that, that woman that was next to each other um, with the difference, like we purposely 
captured that lighting and it's very realistic. I was there for that where it is it is that dramatic and so i think as examples are being we jokingly called her corilla deville because of the harsh shadows and the way that she looked and so but she's a lovely lady and i know her and she's perfect so but it was just that's as more people understand and once you have good lighting and you go into spaces that don't you drastically can tell a difference so i do think top mount lighting are slowly phasing out. I know Roburn has phased them out completely. So it is a trend that we are seeing. Yep. And then, so she added to that question about the above the mirror, but I think you addressed that. Yep. Above yep. the mirror top mount. Yes. Yep. yep. And that's, okay, great. Thank you. Um, there is a question here about, uh, are the circadian light cycles automated in the fixture or is it a recommended light for each time of day? It's a re recommended light, per each time of day. So let me um, go from current slide. So if you see here, this is really nice because it shows you kind of like how your, your sleep-wake cycle looks. So based on research that has been done on circadian rhythms, they actually recommend that you have your best light or you know that um, neutral white light between nine and one because that is when you're going to be the most awake the most productive and so that lighting helps to keep you at that state if you get that lighter later in the evening as you can imagine it's going to keep you more alert instead of winding down and anytime you throw off your circadian rhythms as we know if you stay up but until three o'clock in the morning one day, it kind of throws you off and makes you more drowsy throughout the next day. So this is just based on research that was done to show, you know, this is the the ideal sleep um, wake, awake um, cycle. However, just know some things can shift based on if you're a night person versus a morning person. So there are some variances to the schedule. Okay, that's good. That, I love this slide. This is very interesting. Yeah, I found it very useful to understand. So yeah, and so again, um, that's why some people like to have that 2700, that warm light at night because it does feel calming, it's warm, it's comfortable, it kind of winds you down. Great, and then someone's asking, uh, Rachel, if you could go into a little bit more uh, description about R1-R9CRI. Sure, absolutely. So this is the one. So CRI, let me go back to my slides so I can um, describe, make sure I'm describing it the same way. So CRI is basically your, your color rendering. So you want to make sure, actually, let me go back to here. You want to make sure that when you have a mirror installed that someone's going to look as close as possible. You're going to have lighting in that bathroom to make them look as close as possible to the natural light that's outside. And so as you can see from this image is the result with the 50 CRI, how she's kind of dull. It's unflattering. It's not. We've seen that by going into public restrooms sometimes and the light is kind of darker. It's not good. You can't really get ready or do anything. It's it's kind of just to check and see how you're doing and then get out. Um, so having that lighting to where it looks more accurate, you want to know, um, here's another example. You want to, um, if you're doing your makeup even, you want it to, again, these all kind of play together, that you want to know that the color of your skin tone is going to look the same inside as it is outside if you've done your makeup and you're not going to go outside too orange or anything like that. So having that true to color, true as possible to the outdoor, outdoor lighting and a CRI is going to be super important. Um, and then your, like I said, the R9 value measures the skin tones and like wood tones. So it's going to capture those reds. So your, let me see how I used that. Yeah, so it's going to yeah, so that's so R9 is just another value that you should look for within manufacturers to see how they're reporting if you're designing a bathroom, because obviously you're going to need to make sure that lighting is important and who looks in mirrors, it's going to be people. So you need to make sure skin tone looks accurate. And so R9 will capture those red tones. It will capture um, that. So I don't know if that answered your question or if you need me to go into more detail. Okay. Um, I'll wait to see a response on that, but we do have some more info 
another question here. Confirming we would need to spec different fixtures to provide proper CCT. One slide looked like there was a scene control switch that provided CTT color options with one mm -hmm. fixture. Yes. Yep. So the you can do this slide. So yes, if you want, you need to have a product that allows for this color variance. Um, an example is, um, you know, we have products that we call our tunable. So tunable means that it allows you to do a range between t warm white, that 2700, all the way up to like say 5600, which is that blue white. So the ability to make it tunable, you can either um, install a control that allows you to change it manually as a, however you want, or you can do these scene controls, which allow you to preset what kind of color arrangement that you want and then the customer just uses that from that day forward. Um, this is obviously very convenient because being able to manually tune and dim can be overwhelming. So this makes scene controls make it much easier to kind of preset at the beginning based on your your customers needs. Okay, yeah, that's a really interesting um, lighting control system. I like that. Yes, and there's several there's several uh, companies out there that do scene controls, and they just keep growing as home automation keeps growing. So, definitely look. There's even some that are capacitive touch controls. I mean, it's really it's really getting pretty elaborate, and it's pretty exciting to see how things are going. Great, great. So we have time for another question or two, um, and if not, then we're going to um, sign off. So I'll wait for another second here to see if we have any more questions. It's been great questions, by the way. Great questions. Oh, great. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm not seeing any further questions. Rachel, I want to thank you for your time and your expertise today. This has been really uh, very informative. And I want to thank all of you for attending. And once again, to thank Samsung for their generous sponsorship for our webinars for the month of May. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.